Okay, this is Alex, and I figured while I was doing product reviews, I should review my own my own work, um, at least in part. Um, you may have a couple of people have commented on my on this pick, which I've been using a lot lately. I made it recently from a piece of um, just carbon steel um, uh, sheet metal. Um, I'll tell you about the source at some other point. Um, when I made it. What I was trying to do was duplicate the ends on my two most used picks um, from a particular thickness of metal. This is an HPC, um, I don't remember where I got it, it does not have a model number on it, but it's an HPC pick, uh, also carbon steel. You can see that it's very heavily used. Um, so I was trying to duplicate that, and that's about a number two curve by my, the way I calculate those things. Um, and then uh, this is the Peterson small diamond and I was trying to replicate that. I think I got it a little bit short, um, but um, you may have noticed on some of my home brews there's a lot of, uh, um, I tend to put these little curves in and I find that that helps with the, the grip depending on which way you're holding it. Um, for me that works pretty well and even, uh, let's see if I can show, the the based on the length, this groove here actually gives something for the heel of my hand to hook onto uh, to give me a little bit better you know, leverage and um, uh, arc on that. I didn't get it quite symmetrical. Um, so this took me well over an hour to make. Um, well, half an hour to an hour. Um, There's a lot of filing um, and a lot of sanding and polishing and so forth. They were really shiny. They're now not because they've been used a lot. Um, so probably could use another polish. Um, but I really like this pick and I like it because I can be picking a lock, I can rake a little bit with the diamond and then when I get to the point where I really need some more precision I flip it around so I'm in here with the diamond, I'm picking, I'm picking and then I need to you know, get a little more precision, go in with the hook, screw something up, reset, go back to the diamond. So um, what I did, I found myself using these two picks. So I was like, well, I'll put them together in one so that when I break them and I broke my uh, Peterson, that's a brand new one right there, um, I can, uh, I'll have uh, backup. So this guy's been working pretty well for me. Um, this is made out of, uh, just the thickness on it is 020. Um, which is a, I find a, a good thickness for me, for the kind of picking I do. It gets into most of your Euro keyways. It's strong enough for other locks. It does bend a little bit, um, but it's flexible enough that you can kind of bend it back, straighten it out, and, you know, it'll eventually break, but, you know, so it goes. Um, and it's carbon steel, so if you wanted to um, normal, normalize it and reharden it and you do a very careful job, you can do that. The stainless is a little harder to do that on. So, anyway, um, you might want to try making one of these. Um, I've got one or two others that I've made, um, some of which came out pretty well, um, some of which broke. Um, and uh, I was just looking for a particular other one that is gone AWOL. But um, yeah, they're, um, it's, it's fun to make your own picks and it, I find it particularly fun um, uh, when you can do something sort of clever with them. Um, I'm not going to show that. That thing's horrible. Anyway, uh, so just a quickie. And um, so have some fun. Um, you can order the feeler gauge. Bill had a great uh, link for that. Um, you can also get it off of Amazon. Um, I should have a piece laying around here somewhere, yeah. This is, I've actually got this marked out to make another, oops, another one of the similar, um, similar style. This is a piece of Sterrett, um, what is it, 023, um, feeler gauge. Um, this is not Sterrett, but this is a, a 040, which I'm going to use to make some dimple picks. Um, but you can see it's laid out pretty much exactly like that one, except I've got it backwards. But um, one tip that I'll just add before I stop is that the most important part of the shape is the top. The bottom, you want it straight. If it's got some little wiggles and stuff, you can live with it, right? 
Um, but this is straight, and so filing this to the right to get the shaft to the aspect you want is easy. This part, getting this and the curve right, is the hardest. So when I make this one, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cut and shape the tip on the top, the top of the, t the end first. Do the same on the other end and then come in and mill out or grind out the remainder of the material. And you can, act, this black is just for my own reference. The actual line is down in here. It's probably very hard to see, but there's it's a line scribed on there. Um, same on the other side. But this is where I'll come in with the grinder, grind all the black off, and then come in with files and finish it off. Um, this, I've used this sort of technique before where I left a bunch of metal on the bottom and then uh, came in, shaped this, and then finished it off. That works really well because once you have this down thin, if you want to file on these edges in here, it's really hard to clamp it, right? So here I can clamp it very solidly in the vise, you know, go in, go in there with my needle files and then, um, uh, and then finish off the bottom on the grinder and with a mill file. So um, you don't have to buy sterret stock, but I can tell you this stuff is really hard. My carbide scraper using a lot of, or a scribe using a lot of pressure, barely scratches the stuff. It is very hard. I may not be able to file it. Um, so, which will be interesting. So, anyhow. So that's my handiwork. Um, and, uh, you know, it gets sanded and polished and it's pretty smooth. So, um, but this double-ended thing works great for me. Um, only bad thing is it doesn't fit in pick cases. So, that's the, the downside on it. Anyhow, um, this is Alex. Thanks for watching. Um, and uh, have fun. And as always, please keep it legal. Cheers.